is Hunter Avalon now apparently curious about Christianity? So check this out. You may know Hunter Avalon. We all make fun of him on a regular basis. We call him, you know, soy boy, blah, 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 nerd, all this stuff. He's a very generic liberal debate me YouTuber. But as you may know, he actually used to be a conservative. He is an icon of the old school 2016 anti SJW stuff. He got married to this woman. He's been a liberal for a few years now, been very annoying, been a menace on all our side of the Internet. But we have some very interesting developments. Are we indeed back? Well, let me let me read this for you. So as you know, Hunter Avalon very recently went through a, a, a divorce, separation, whatever. Very messy on that front. I believe she was like cheating on him and all this stuff. It was it was not good. OK, not good. Genuinely almost had to feel a little bit bad for the guy. But I don't know what's happening here. A little bit of a character arc. He now is considering Christianity. You know, you, we've seen this arc a million times, right? He's starting to become curious. And then uh, we'll show you in a second. He's actually starting to call out very mildly his own side. So I'm not calling him red pilled. I'm not saying we're so back yet, but you're starting to see a little bit of a character arc. I would I would think is about to happen here and we'll see where it goes. But Hunter Avalon tweeted this out today. He says, I've been thinking a lot of the arguments made against Christians regarding faith, because as you may know, pretty sure Hunter Avalon, you know, total atheist, total secularist. Right. And he says, I, too, have a I, I, too. OK, I, too, have attacked Christianity for its reliance on faith. But I've actually started to come around on why faith makes sense strictly and only in regards to religion. Huh. Long post coming up. So he says. In the beginning, God commanded Adam and Eve to not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I never thought about that until recently, but he says the knowledge of good and evil is our quest for knowledge, our literal knowledge of good and bad. Before then, Adam and Eve walked with God. They worked on faith and God guided them and they essentially followed blindly. I don't know if I'd really say it like that because they actually have the ability to walk with God. And so is that faith or is that actually seeing it? Whatever. It doesn't matter. OK, that's besides the point. They operated on faith. It's a psychological fact that most humans are happiest when living in the moment. That's that. See, like I said, I, I don't think he's fully there yet because I, I, I don't think I think having faith is basically the opposite of living in the moment. Right. You're living for the future. You're living for the existential, for the eternal. But but OK, like I said, he's, he's starting to ask questions. That's the point here. Uh, but he goes on to say, had we followed God instead of having our own knowledge of good and evil, we'd be naturally operating on faith. In other words, we'd be living in the moment because the worries about tomorrow are out of our hands. The way we were in originally created to live was in the moment and be happy. I guess I understand what he's saying in that regard, uh, but we'll continue here. Now, when it comes to salvation, I was really hung up on faith being the key to salvation. I found it really weird that rational thinking couldn't lead me to God. But then I realized if God's gift truly is for everyone, faith is the key. Not everyone is rational. If someone isn't rational, then God's gift wouldn't be accessible to them. Faith is something that all human beings are capable of. That is true. And what I will say furthermore is, you know, Hunter Avalon, because he's a debate me, bro. He's a total like. Hey, hey, my study says actually my study. Man, 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 let me Google my study, right? He's very obsessed with this concept of rationality, right? And rationality to a degree, I think, is important, right? You want to think through the things that you believe. But the idea that any of us are 100% rational beings is nonsense. I would actually argue that human beings are actually inherently in many ways irrational, right? We, we are designed, I would argue, by God, but in many ways to actually very often just trust our instincts and trust the things we see in front of us, right? Why are human beings afraid of the dark? Well, you could lay out, right? Hey, actually, it's because, uh, you know, the bad things, the predators are in the dark. I suppose, I suppose, sure, right? But we're born being scared of the dark. It's, it's not something we need to, we need to understand nature and we need to understand predators and biology to understand that. No, we're just born naturally that way, right? And, and this has been one of my biggest criticisms of Hunter Avalon for a long time, because he, he goes and tries to find these pseudo scientific studies that say, um, actually, you know, gender is a spectrum and all this stuff, when obviously that's being manufactured to try to appeal to his sense of rationality, even though it is irrational. But furthermore, how do you need to know there's two genders? You don't need a study to do it. You just need to look at the world around you. Right. And so that, that's kind of the point on rationality. Um, but now he started to kind of ask questions and realize, hey, well, this rationality I have worshipped for the past few years, uh, it didn't stop my wife from leaving me. 
Hey, I know that's brutal, but it's true, right? It didn't stop my wife from leaving me. It's not stopped me from just being like a miserable person, which he visibly is. And now he's starting to realize actually faith or something in that regard. He, he's starting to ask the questions, right? Is sort of fundamental also uh, to the human existence here. Okay. And so I feel like that's, I don't, I don't speak for him, but I feel like that's the kind of the internal monologue he's starting to have. Right. And genuinely, I will connect the two. There is something to be said, right? I, I think he's thinking to himself, this whole personal situation I just went through in my life, my wife cheating on me, leaving me all that stuff, being rational and facts and logic the whole time actually didn't save me from that. Right. Because, you know, I, I was a soy boy. It's, it's real. And, and the irrational side of her said, I'm not attracted to that. I don't care how smart you think you are. But anyways, we continue here. That's the whole point. Finding God isn't supposed to make sense, rationally speaking. It's supposed to be a leap of faith because faith is the only way that God's gift can truly be accessible by everyone, um, I, I, I suppose. I get what he's saying here, but here, you know what I would say in response is, so you say everyone is capable of faith, but not everyone is capable in your eyes of rationality, which I would actually argue no one is capable of 100% rationality, but fine. So, Hunter, why is it that faith is something, in your words, that all humans are capable of, but rationality they are not? Perhaps it suggests that, you know, whether or not you believe we are created by God inherently, maybe humans are supposed to live by faith in many regards. Maybe this idea of total rationality is actually a lie. And it's a lie that in many ways, I would argue, has ruined your life on a personal level. But here we go. Even G Jesus's miracles reinforce this. For example, when the fishermen couldn't catch anything, Jesus told them to cast their nets on the other side of the boat. This completely defies rational thinking and even what feels intuitively correct. Plus, these were professional fishermen. So Jesus commanded the experts to, to defy the rational and instead rely on faith. I mean, that's an interesting argument. I don't know if it's the first one I'd use, but I, I see what he's saying. This is my argument thus uh, far to establish how and why faith actually makes sense in regards to Christianity. Now that knowledge. Now, this is the cringe part. He says, now that knowledge of good and evil exists, faith isn't a good metric for truth. We have no choice but to rely on our knowledge now to improve the world, etc. Faith should only be used in the context of religion. To which I say to that. I mean, we, we already addressed that point earlier, so I'm, I'm not going to get too much into it. But, you know, the, the idea is still and, and this is the problem still with his liberal worldview. He thinks that we now have liberated ourselves from the needs for, from the need for things like faith and intuition and all the ways human beings just naturally are. And this is the, the central premise of liberalism, right? It's, hey, I get it. Human beings naturally have these tendencies and these moral traditions and these sort of beliefs that we're in many ways born with, i.e. the genders, right? But now that we have technology, now that we've progressed in advance, we no longer need these constraints as human beings. That's why we're liberals, right? We can liberate ourselves in this regard. Um, and that's where I do disagree with Hunter, because I say to that, yes, you are right. We have changed as human beings, right? Things have changed, certainly on this earth. But fundamentally, I still think that human beings are human beings. You know, we haven't evolved, right? We're still the same on the inside. Technology can change. Societal size and, and complexity can change. But fundamentally, we still need faith as human beings. We, we can't just say we've moved past it because we have not changed as human beings, nor, in my opinion, has the greater reality of God obviously changed. Uh, so, you know, there's still cringe parts of what he said, but it's interesting to see him, right, starting to ask questions, starting to be a little bit more open to some of these discussions. So he goes on to conclude here, there's still a lot of beep about Christianity that I'm hung up on. This post isn't me coming out as, as Christian, rather it's just my thoughts on faith being internally consistent in Christianity. Well, you know, obviously, Hunter, it is a process, you know, I... You got a lot of conditioning to break. You got a long ways to go. But, uh, you know, maybe it's time to come home, Hunter. It's time to come home. Let's be real, okay? Whatever you want to say. I know for a fact deep down, because I could see it in your physiognomy there versus now. I could see it in your behavior. You were happier when you were a conservative. Don't deny it, okay? Because what's happened since? What's happened since you, you left the right? 
all that happened is you unironically got cucked, right? Your, your wife cheated on you and all this stuff. Terrible, terrible. Feel bad for you in, in all honesty. But that is the end consequence of a liberal life. I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, okay? You can do, oh, hey, man, my scientists say that there's more than two genders, all blah, blah. I, you know, you can do all that. You can do that song and dance. But at the end of the day, what he is starting to realize and many people are realizing is that, hey, all this obsession with uh, worshiping the experts, worshiping liberalism, it's only a dead end. Even if I think I want these debates, hey, I debate me, bro, debate me, bro. Deep down inside, the, the liberal mind is miserable as it should be. It's in denial of truth. It's in denial of the natural state of human existence. And we understand this to be the case, right? Uh, and so I, I, I would say if I were to describe, that's basically what's going on here with Hunter Avalon. It's a very interesting character development, to say the least. We'll see what happens. But uh, to show you more of some recent developments, so he also has come out recently and criticized some aspects of the pride movement. Now, he went out earlier today and said, or yesterday, today, so somewhere, he said that, uh, I can't believe responsibility politics is don't whip your blank out in front of family. So he went out there and said, this is the original tweet, actually. He said, why do people who include nudity and overt displays of kink at pride parades the pr the pride parade right should be a family friendly event so even gay kids can feel accepted okay cringe ending obviously but he says uh accepting gay people can be easily done without flashing flashing your blank out in front of kids and then someone one of his fans replies to him and says why are you capitulating to fascists OK, so all he's going out there and saying is the very basic, you know, not even revolutionary take. Hey, maybe these people shouldn't put their genitals out in pride marches. And uh, this person says capitulating to fascists over their ridiculous fear mongering will not stem the flood of violence. They're directing our way. Stop with the respectability politics. And Hunter Avalon's like standing against clearly inappropriate behavior isn't capitulating to fascists. Your sick defense of this BS only emboldens their fascistic narrative. So obviously, right? Oh, wow, Vince, Hunter Avalon just went out there and criticized kink at a pride march. Wow, so revolutionary, right? He's so, so based and red-pilled for saying that, you know, naked people shouldn't be out in front of children. I get it. Okay, I'm not saying that Hunter Avalon is red-pilled. All I'm saying is that it's very interesting. The past 24 hours, he went out and said something that even as basic as it is, as, as uninspiring as it is, of course it's true. I'm not going to give him pat, a pat on the back for it. But the fact that he knowingly went out there and counter-signaled his own liberal fans, knowing that people would get mad at him for it, that does tell you something. I don't know what it tells you, tells you something. And then here he is asking a little, just asking questions, right, about Christianity. It's very interesting to see. OK, so comment your thoughts. Are we going to see a gradual Hunter Avalon arc back? OK, and like I said, I, I, I do certainly myself tie it to events in his personal life. I think that's what's sort of happening here, right? He's realizing that liberalism is a black hole. He, maybe he doesn't realize it intuitively yet, but he, deep down, that's what his soul is saying, right? His soul is screaming out for purpose and meaning because his world's been destroyed. His marriage has been destroyed. And uh, I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. OK, we're, we're praying for you, Hunter. It's time to come home. It's time to come home where you've always belonged and, and stop being. OK, stop being miserable. Come back. OK, we're, let's recreate 2016. That, that, like, that would be such a victory. H having Hunter Avalon back on the internet, it, it truly would. So we'll, we'll see where this all leads. We'll see where this all leads. Yeah, Bleach Nationalists, pray for Hunter. Okay, pray for Hunter. <laughs>guys vince dow here hope you enjoyed that clip from the vince dow show if you did be sure to leave a like and subscribe 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 if you are new to the channel and be sure to check out the vince dow show live every weeknight here on this channel at 8 p.m eastern time it is a great show many are saying this many are saying this so leave a like check out our other uh, our other clips and be sure to check out the show yeah, God bless.